Dr. Jorge Mateos for everything that he's done to contribute to this series on music and sustainability, opening with the first concert. And, um, and of course today, he's just been precious. Um, I am honored to welcome also the Melody of Dragon Instrumental Ensemble and the Wintergreen Country Opera. Mr. Chen Kao is in charge, and we are honored to have one of the most valuable treasures of China performed today, the Peony Pavilion, four centuries old. And um, so I will, without further comment, uh, ask you to read the biographies in the programs. We will get more for you and uh, to join me in extending a very warm welcome to Mr. Chen Pao. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Professor Hampton and the Hunt College to give us the great opportunity to come here to uh, present you the special program here today. But before we really start our program, I have a few questions for you. Have you ever watched the Queen uh, performance? Nobody? Oh, have you ever listened to the Chinese uh, music? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, do you know in China, except the Queen Chi, we also have the Peking Opera? No? Okay, that's good. <laughs> Alright, so that's why I would bring you uh, actually today um, we, we're going to focus on the, uh, uh, the Queen Chi and I will um, uh, ask my friend, uh, the director and the founder of the Winter, uh, Winter Green Queen Chi Society, uh, Ms. Tang Dong Ching, to tell you what's the Queen Chi theater. Uh, what's the um, uh, what's the um, uh, uh, element of the country, and uh, we also we're gonna have a, a, a makeup demonstration, and we'll bring you and uh, we'll uh, tell you the steps of how to make the beauty on the young lady. All right, and also after that we're gonna have a um, country performance, and actually I want to um, probably somebody already heard that. Uh, that there's a famous Quinchy performance, it's, it's called the Peeling Pavilion. Have you heard No? Okay. <laughs> Actually, uh, back to like 10 years ago, the Lincoln Center, they invited the Shanghai Quinchy uh, troops to come to the um, United States and they have a worldwide touring for the Quinchy performance. And uh, uh, we have uh, the, our Quinchy. Um, makeup master, Ms. Yang Guilin, and also our percussionist, uh, Mr. Wang Shilong. They, they are both served uh, as a member of the, the, the worldwide touring uh, group. Uh, so, uh, and uh, later, after the uh, day, day uh, performance, and we also, I, as a musician, I will tell you what's the difference between the Chinese music and the Quinch music. Okay, now let's welcome uh, Ms. Zhang Dongqing, the director and the founder of uh, Winter, uh, Winter Green Quinch Society. <laughs> and also, uh, excuse me, and also let's welcome the, uh, uh, our uh, Quinch um, uh, makeup master, Yang Guilin. Beijing Opera fan. So I grew up with the Beijing Opera. 
and I began my study of Quanqu from Chinese scholars when I was a teenager. And uh, I have promoted Quanqu theater in the United States since 1995. I'm not a Quanqu performer. I have no a Chinese scholar on Quanqu theater. Myself is simply a Quanqu addict. I have devoted but Quincy has been part of my life during the past 40 plus years. What I'm here, I'm glad to share with you what I have learned over the, this long period of time. And today I will cover, um, I'll give you a just a very short history, just give you some time frame of about the Quincy theater. And then I want to explain to you some of the basic four elements involved in my Quincy performance. And if the time allows, and I will also give you the three factors that can help you to distinguish all different kinds of Chinese classical theater from each other. In short, Quincy is a musical play. So usually, I refer to it as a Quincy theater. It's because in a Quincy performance, three media working simultaneously and harmoniously these three factors are singing, recitation, and the dance. And then with the performance and acting, they pull all these media together integrated into a quinty performance. History. About over 400 years ago, Master William Hu, he established quinty music around 1530 AD. Quinty in Chinese, literally, Quan means Quan San Qu is music. So the term Quan Qu means music from the district of Quan San, which is a place near Suzhou in Suzhou province today. But this music, after when it was established, it was not adopted for theater until 40 years later, around 1570, when Master Quan a great a playwriter, Liang Chenyu. He successfully presented his uh, country play, The Story of Washington, Wan Sa Qi, 1570. And uh, after that uh, presentation, the country spread from the Sudo region throughout China. And for the next 100 years, Quanqu was regarded as the most prestigious form of drama in China. The current form of the perform Quanqu performance is largely complete at that time. However, it has been continually, it has been refined continuously for the next 400 years. A very long time. In general, in a country performance, we talk about three media working together, the singing, recitation, and the dance. And the critical element is acting. Acting with the performer using an acting, they pull all these media together and in harmony. So first thing I want to talk about, so the most significant subsequent development, in my view, is in the acting. So what I want to talk about, when you talk about the acting, I want to talk to you uh, share with you is about the main thing of the country place, what the play writers they want to convey. When they write a country place, they are not intended. The main thing is uh, to express passions of people, of all classes of people in the society, from royal family to the blue, blue collar laborers to every daily life. The intention is not to create a role model, but to convey passion. So as a result, the training is also focused on that. So performers, they will train to carry out the movement and act out from internal. And they are taught to use internal feelings to drive every stylized movement. So you must move with the passion, move with the feeling, and uh, in harmony with the music. So I believe acting is one of the critical elements that lead the 
country to be recognized by the United Nations, UNESCO, in 1999, to be a masterpiece of the oral and an intangible heritage of humanity. So, with the, keep this in mind, I'm going to, to just give you an overview about the other three elements. The first one I want to talk about is singing. For most of the country, then, singing is the most critical element of many. Some people, like my teacher, the Chinese scholar, throughout his life, he developed to country. He sings, but he, never, he was never on the stage. Singing involves two distinct sub-elements. That's the music and the word, the lyric of Quench Aria. In the Ming Dynasty, that's in between 1368 to 1644 AD, the most, the most popular regional music at that time, there were several other um, several regional music, Haiyanqiang, Yiyang, Liao, and Hunsan. And the Master Wei Fu and his collaborator, they integrate the several popular mu regional music, basically are those Hunsan, Yiyang, Haiyan, Haiyan, Yiyang, Liao. They integrate those regional, famous regional music into Hunsan local music. This vandalized uh, the rules of the rhyme, tones, punctuation, and the notation of the country. Make, make the local Quinsan music from a regional form of music become a national standard. There are several hundred, several hundred Chu Pai in Quinsu repertory. Chu Pai in Quinchu music is expressed so called Chu Pai. The Chu Pai basically is a, is a tone title. It defines the tone pattern. It defines the number of lines of um, and uh, the number of um, syllable each lines and tonal sequence. And the rhyme scan for each aria. The Chi Pai, usually Chi Pai, you have a series of them. The Chi Pai, the subordinate Chi Pai, Pai that follows the masterpiece, the main melody, it must be arranged a, in a specific order. Today, you can find a book. It shows you, if you start with this main melody, what should follow, it will give you a number of them. You, you must you follow with that sequence. And at each point, it will find the two pattern of the restricted rules on that. So, in the Chi Pai, with so many Chi Pai, you can distinguish them as northern and southern music. In general, northern music is uh, used a seven tone scale. That's a Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si. In the southern scale, southern style, Quen Chi, Chi Pai, they use only five scale. Do, Re, Mi, Sol, La. And uh, another general observation is that uh, Chi Pai, southern style got a, a lot of music, and, uh, but a fewer words. In northern style Chi Pai, it has uh, more words, but a little short, shorter music. So you can, but later on we will perform interrupt the dream. Maybe you can, based on this, see if you can determine whether that music is a certain music or modern Chinese music. So now I think uh, maybe I should just let me, this is, I'm on the first class singing on the music, but I think when they start to uh, make, it, uh, make up, so I think maybe I'll just stop right here and uh, just uh, uh, let me explain to you their makeup sequence what you need about it. Is that okay with you? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, these are right now, you know, Chinese, they usually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They pulled the, the eye up. They could get ready 
really, they are going to have a lot of those small hair pins <coughs> to put in there. Usually, it takes about seven of them. But for those hair pins, you have to soak, make it look wet looking and very uh, shiny. And uh, in order to keep that wet looking the first night, we have small those uh, uh, hair pins. And uh, when she starts, I will show you. But first night, you have to soak in warm water. And uh, you have to use this. Uh, this is from elm tree. You soak in warm water and you squeeze it. It will come out with some sticky, like a glue-like um, liquid. And then you soak the hair. And the next day, you soak hair into that liquid. So it will stay wet and sticky for several hours. We have experimented trying to find a, um, a substitution for this, because we have to get this from China. We try the gel spray, we try the glue. It doesn't hold that long. But if you don't keep it wet, shiny and looking, it will curl out from your face. It doesn't stay. So this is one of the things now you can see that the If you have any question at this part, you can ask right away. But later, when they go back, you don't have a chance to ask. All right? If you have any question, you can ask right away. So you have to be very skillful in this is the top tight you can be. Because if you are too tight, then uh, they will they will they feel easy. Easy. <laughs> if you are too loose, maybe you will fall off. The whole thing will fall off on stage. So it's it's just a matter of a lot of practice. Um, I don't know how many types of Xi uh, Qi in China, uh, but uh, what I learned, the uh, Quan Qi is the ancestor of all the uh, other Xi uh, Qi. So in Quan uh, in Quan Qi, they make the uh, do the makeup for the young lady like this. What about for the other Xi uh, Qi? Like for example, like the Peking Opera, they also follow this rule, follow this. Uh, in, in 
As I said earlier, Quan Xu, the first Quan Xu play was a stage in 1570. And uh, right now, the most popular Chinese Xi Qu is Chinese classical theater is the Beijing Opera. That was emerged around 1790. It is a, so they inherited a lot of feature of um, Quan Xu. Conceptually, the stage setting and uh, uh, costume, conceptually they are similar. So this is an, in Quan Xu, women have, in one category, would have eight different types, women's role type. Beijing Opera is a, both in Beijing Opera and in Quan Xu called Fan. In this particular, we are, uh, role type we are going to play today is called women band. It's the fifth uh, with women role type in Quan Chu. So in Beijing Opera, they also add the makeup procedures pretty similar. But it's pretty similar. The, the basic step, they are similar, but sometimes the help piece or emphasis to how they indicate the role type maybe have a minor alternation, but those differences is it's, uh, it's some detail of <coughs> principle, they are the same. And also, if you want to, today in China, we have about 400, about 400 different Chinese classical theater. And uh, the three factors can help you, you can use to distinguish one from the others are one is language. Quan Chu, a song that based on Chinese language structure, it's based on a Chinese book completed in Ming Dynasty. It is specified the pronunciation and the tone in that book. So Quan Chi's uh, stage language is based on that book, the pronunciation and tone. It's not the same as our normal conversation. That feature has passed down to Beijing Opera. So these two, Quan Chi and Beijing Opera, they, are national, uh, they have a national character. All other types of Chinese um, classical theater, they are sung with a regional dialect. So this is the first um, factor that the di differentiates the Chinese classical theater language. Second is the uh, repertoire. Each classical theater is based on their own regional <coughs> story. And uh, the third is music. So you, if you have been in Beijing Opera, you can tell the Beijing Opera music is very different from Quan Chu. And all other regional um, classical theater, they also have a Chu Pai. That Chu Pai is very distinct in that local regional. It's not within the collection of Quan Chu. So the three factor language, repertoire, and music that distinguish Chinese can, can be used to distinguish Chinese classical theater from each other. So now, um, oh, early on, I think I, I, I was talking, they have one step <coughs> I just want to explain to you, it's a very critical one, they wrap around with a black shield thing. And that, that one is a critical, is when you wrap it around, and that's when you can hold these pieces on the hair. And when many years ago, when I learned that, I tried to do that, I complete the procedure. I was so proud of myself. <laughs> and I forgot one thing. I forgot to wrap that black <coughs> shield thing on the hair. And I put on a complete process. Once the, fortunately, that was just a photo shot. It's not a me. We found out when she got on stage, there's a hair piece <laughs> falling, began to falling off. <laughs> because it doesn't hold there. So it's a, some each each step is serve a purpose. The three pieces on the back we call the back three pieces Ho San Pian. This one on the top has a name called Bing uh, Hua. That means a flower on the top. And then let me see the next one. This is Bing Hua. This uh, on the side, that is smaller, we call paozi. So paozi, that is simply, they are different kinds. And uh, this one in old day, we call, this blue one is called
called Yen Chui. It used to be made, the, the blue color is made from the bird feather. But then now, because of the green effect, the wild animal protection, you cannot get that anymore. So instead, they use the green the silk. Um, they make it look like. Look like. <coughs> and the Yen Chui usually Yen Chui usually is only for wealthy families, uh, young lady, they can use it. And a woman's uh, role type in what she was seeing today, particularly is called women dance in the dan. I talk about it in women's role type, we have eight different kinds. The first is generally distinguished by age and the character. The first one, Yi Dan, is, is the older woman. It's, usually it's about age between 50 to 60 years old. Our dan, the second dan, is called, is about for the woman, you mean age woman, about 30 to 40 years old. And so usually the vocal, they will use a little broader. And the second dan is some young woman, usually with some comedy feature, is very pleasant. And uh, also it's very exaggerated. And called zuo dan. The, the fourth one, is assassinating. It's a talk about some woman that really either deeply upset or very ang angry. It's about to kill. In certain uh, particular play, uh, if they are about to kill something, somebody, and uh, they, they have a different behavior that's called si And uh, the fifth one is to have a large sort of repertoire in Quenqi. Women dan, we call women dan. It's usually it's a very elegant lady. It's from the classical wealthy family or scholar's family. I think this is one. I don't know. It's just it's some strip. Uh, they put on the side. I think today people sometimes they use a substitute. They have the, 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 uh, use a fabric. They make it like this way, uh, and then they put the, the those uh, some some pouch already on the top of it. All they do they just just tie it on the on the head, so they don't have to go step by step to put in each one of them. But today I think they didn't use that one. They use the actual one. They Put in one, each one of them. So I finished with the Liu Dan. The, the, the sixth woman's role type is a young maid. Usually, those wealthy ladies, they always have a young little girl and they can serve, serve them. Those girls usually is about them in between, it's about them below, younger than 20 years old, and the young maid's role type. <coughs> These are the most six, six different types of role. Role type for women I have seen. The last two is since it's, uh, it's kind of very vague, but whether it will go, they will go away or not. <coughs> now today we have to well, finish up the finish up the, the flower, all those things. Um, maybe one thing I want to. I want to talk about is just the dance, the dance form of uh, uh, Chinese theater. In in Quinchu, music word and the dance, music word and dance, they work simultaneously and in harmony in order to convey the meaning and the desired beautiful effect. All the movement are generally designed to serve two functions. One is to express emotion by imitating actual movement in real life and beautify them into dance form. The second function is to interpret the word sound by the performer. Each word and phrase is expressed by a stylized movement or gesture that is essentially part of the dance which is strict rules of style and execution, much like a ballet dance. Every uh, movement has to be precisely executed. Now, let me give you just a simple example of the uh, 
the guest produced. That was it. The guest so just for you to facilitate the life, if you know people when they are sad, they are crying something, and uh, they will shed a tear. They maybe just slip the cover the face in the front, they shed a tear. But it also helps to interpret the word that they are singing or the help expressing expression. So they will shed a tear. <coughs> the opera, uh, you know the singer, they always accompanied by the big orchestra, bless you. Yeah. <laughs> accompanied by the big orchestra, they have the conductor, all right? But the, the, for the Chinese, um, the theater, uh, the Quinci theater, we basically, the music accompanying the singer, we have, uh, we call the Wen Chang. <coughs> Wen Chang means the, uh, the singer accompanied by the people who are using the musical instrument. And Wu Chang means it's played by the percussion instrument. So basically we have both, uh, the both section of uh, the instrument and the percussion instrument. Uh, for the Chinese uh, theater, uh, the, the, the orchestra, we can have a big orchestra just like the Western uh, uh, <coughs> opera the big orchestra like that size. But we can also have as small as just two people. One, I will play the flute, the music, uh, play the, uh, accompany the singer when you sing. And also, we can have the percussion instrument, just one percussion instrument. Uh, so usually, usually when, um, when, when the singer, they, they have the movement, they, walk around the stage, they usually accompanied by the percussion. But when the singer they are singing, it's usually accompanied by the flute. All right. And later, after our performance, I will tell you more detail on the music. All right. So I let me check if they are ready or not. It's the Chinese. Um, the singing and dance and the poetry uh, they combine together. This is very unique and very important. And also, um, uh, also for the Chinese the, the uh, Chinese theater, the, it's just like the traditional Chinese music. When we play together, uh, we just follow the single melody. It's not like the Western the harmonic based on harmonic. Uh, but the Chinese uh, uh, theater music is just like when you when you listen to the singer and we uh, we play the music we just play the same melody, but um, many different uh, uh, instruments they will add their own ornamentation for like uh, uh, but uh, very important because uh, the in Quinch opera because uh, uh, we just mentioned in China we also have the Peking opera it's uh, very famous. But they, they are using the different uh, instrument. For the, for the Quinci opera, the leading instrument is the flute. It's the flute. But for the Beijing opera, Peking opera, the leader instrument is the, is the uh, two-string fiddle. It's a small two-string fiddle. We call it Jing Fu. Yeah. So that's the different uh, the, the instrument. And uh, also, uh, probably um, most of you, you, you never get a chance to go to China. Uh, I just want to let you know, in China there's a river, it's called the Yangtze River. Uh, the Yangtze River from the west to the east, and across the whole country from the west to east, and divided China into two parts, the northern and the southern. Uh, unlike the uh, United States, we divided the west and the east coast. But in China, we think north and south. So the Quinchi, the Quinchi was uh, 
generate in Quanshan, which is located in south of China. Uh, it's uh, near Shanghai. So now they're ready. So we're gonna go to the performance.
can tell me something about what you learned uh, from the, what the, the Mr. Ching told you or uh, and through the performance, or you have any questions. But now let me maybe let me tell you something about the, the music. I just mentioned before uh, the play the the child, uh, the country music on um, the accompaniment can be as large as the orchestra or as small as two, only two people play, play with the singer. And, uh, but for the music itself, um, I remember uh, at the beginning, Dong Ching mentioned uh, uh, for the modern style of country with the, the scales based on the uh, seven notes. Uh, but the, for the southern music, for the southern uh, uh, country style, uh, the, the, the scale is based on the five notes, which we say is a pentatonic scale, right? Do you know pentatonic scale? Yeah, so it's totally different than the Western uh, music. But I want to tell you so it's the music notation. The, the Chinese music notation is totally than the West, different than the Western notation. You use the five line system, <laughs> yeah, but we using the number system. We using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You never see that? Okay, let me show you. Probably it's too far for you, but uh, that's all you do. Can you see that? Okay, so now I give you this test time. Yeah. While I introduce any of the music, uh, that's the music notation. Basically, uh, we have the single line underneath the notes, and we have the double line. It's the same as the Western notation. Single line means eight notes, and the double line, 60 notes. All right, and uh, we have the uh, 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 two four and four four, but the uh, the, the rhythm we have two four. But in Chi Chinese music, we seldom have the three four. Yeah, we don't have a, even for the as we say the for the country uh, theater. We combine with the uh, music, with the poetry, with the dance. But you never see the dance like words. <laughs> the three four like oh, da, 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 da. no, never. You never see that the performance, the the the, the, the movements like that. That's for the West. But the Chinese, uh, basically, the Chinese music is based on the two four and the four four. But in the theater, in the the the, the, the theater music. There is very special rhythm. It's one four, seven three, five. One four, da 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 da. It is just like a, a, it is a, uh, for for the for the for the Chinese theater music. If we have a two four, sir, that is one hundred yuan. So this is the first. So this is the first beat. Tick, da, second. Second beat. That's the two four. If it's a four four, it's the first beat. One da da da. One da 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 da. You can do change and this. So that's it. But it's very special on the theater movie. We have only the this one. The e bang. The yu bang movie. Ah. Only have one beat. One down beat. Da, 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 da. Ah, for, uh, so this is very special for the for the uh, uh, Chinese uh, uh, traditional music. I, I mean for the theater music. You already saw the uh, music notation, right? So for those who already seen the music notation, I have a question for you. Huh? Don't just take a close look. What about the, we record the rest? Right? You have eight notes rest, sixteen notes or quarter notes rest. How we do the rest? I just told you. You didn't pay attention. You look at the music notation. Okay. Anyone tell me? How do we record the rest? And uh, I say it again. It's based on the uh, memory system. 
is 10, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Think about it. Yes. Perfect. Zero. Zero. Yeah. If we have uh, the same thing uh, for the other, if it's four nodes or if it's eight nodes, we put the, the line underneath the zero. And uh, now, one more question. What about the lower active and the high active? <laughs> Another question. Right? Think about it. What about the lower and the, and the high?